Hello everybody, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. It's another day's journey and I'm so glad and I'm glad that you've joined me on today. I want to talk to you today from the subject, your private secret is now public. Hmm. Your private secret is now public. If you want to hear about this, this concerns our spiritual journey, our spiritual journey with the Lord. Your private secret is now public. My name is Nichelle and these are my notes. All right, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, again, the subject, the topic is your private secret is now public. Your private secret is now public. And if I were to shorten that a little bit, and I think I will, I would say your secret is out. Your secret is out. All right, so when we hear the word secret, uh, we think hidden. It's undisclosed. It's not published. It's not for all to see. We think classified. We think top secret. What secret? We think, uh, you know, the secret is something everybody doesn't know. It's a secret. It's quiet. It's something you don't maybe don't want to talk about or it's not none of anybody's business. It's a secret. I just want to say up front that there are no secrets from God. I mean, we may have secrets from mankind, and um, and and truth. That's true. N no one has to know everything about us. I mean, it's not even wise to tell all of your business to everybody. But I just want to say that God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And he knows everything. Nothing is hidden from him. So really with God, there are no secrets. There are no secrets. God knows our thoughts from afar off. God knows how many strands of hair on your head. He knows that. God knows the path that we take. Um, God knows our heart. See, man, we know that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. So man is looking at how we dress and man is looking at the shoes we have on. Um, man is looking at your, uh, your rank. He's looking at the position you hold on your job. He's looking at uh, your degrees and what have you. But God is looking at our heart. God is looking at um, he's, he hears our thoughts. He, he knows everything about us, every things we don't even know about ourselves. He made us, he knows our makeup. He knows, he, he knows so much that even when he said that he wouldn't put so much on us, uh, uh, except for what he has enabled us to bear. I paraphrase that, but I will have that listed. Um, he knows what we can take. He knows when we should be victorious and we choose not to be victorious because we wanted to do what we did. So we need to keep that in mind that there are no secrets um, from God. There are no secrets from God. Um, I want to give a couple of biblical examples. And um, the first one is Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, uh, we know the first two people on the planet. Um, we know that... Uh, God created Adam first and then Eve from his rib and, and God gave them an instruction. Um, and the instruction was, do not, he gave uh, this to Adam, do not eat of the forbidden fruit. Uh, sometimes people like to call it an apple. The Bible does not say it was an apple. It just says a forbidden fruit. Uh, whatever fruit it was, uh, they were not supposed to touch it. They were not supposed to eat from it. Uh, you can read all about that in Genesis. I'm going to skip to the part that they had ate. And when they ate it, it opened up things that uh, a, a Pandora box, so to speak. It just, it um, their sight, their spiritual sight, they were able to see uh, things, places that God had not wanted them to. Um, they lost a form of innocence, so to speak. 
and God, as they were covering up themselves in the garden uh, or, or seeking to hide from God, you know, playing this game of hide and seek, so to speak, God is asking Adam, where, where are you? Where are you, Adam? And it, of course, God knew exactly where he was. God sees and knows all. But it was a hypothetical question. It was just a, a question uh, uh, thrown out there. Um, God already knew. And um, Adam was hiding from him. Sometimes we think that we can do things and um, God won't know it. <laughs> but be sure to know that your sins will find you out. Be sure to know that um, God sees everything. As a matter of fact, sin stinks in the nostrils of God. It has a scent to it. Um, and so when we are sinful, meaning we're practicing sin, meaning we're not washing in the water of the world, we're not repenting of it, and we're continuing in it, or what have you. Or um, God, he He smells that. It, it Sin stinks in his nostrils. And so we cannot hide from God. Let me go to when we were children and how many of us, you know, went in there and got that cookie or got into that chocolate or, or such. And as small children, as toddlers, you know, we call ourselves, we might have tried to clean it up or um, it was all over our mouth. And, and I mean, there are times I'm wondering, how did they know that I was into that? How did they know that I, I did what I did? You know, because in your own, uh, you know, the age group that you were in and how you thought at that age, you thought you were doing something and you didn't understand that you cleaned up after yourself, but there's a trail of stuff on the floor that they saw and had to ultimately come clean up themselves. They saw, they can see the chocolate all on our faces that we didn't even realize was there. And so we were caught. We were caught, and that's how it is with God. God, He see we're His children, and He sees when we get into mishaps and and so on and so forth. And as growing Christians, when we do make mistakes, we have to go back and say, "Lord, forgive me, Lord, I'm sorry." Yes, Lord, I did that. He already knows, but He's looking for us to confess our faults to him. You know, he's faithful to and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And going back to the Bible again, here we have King David. King David, also the commander of the Jewish army. And here, this is the time when David wasn't even supposed to be in the palace. He was supposed to be doing as kings do and going off to war, going off to war and, and be in charge of the army. But for whatever reason, he stayed back at the palace. He stayed back at the palace and as he stayed back and wasn't in his place of service, wasn't where he was supposed to have been, he found some mischief. He got into some trouble. Um, so much so to where we read about it in the Bible today. We still, it, it, it's a real life reality series going on with King David and other characters in the Bible. If you want some exciting reading, some truthful reading, get into your word get into your word. And I believe this story was found in 1 Samuel. I will have it listed. But anyway, King David, he's sitting there and he, you know, the lust of the eyes. He he walks right into lust of the eyes. He's sitting there and, and uh, he's staring at Bathsheba and he's watching her bathe and such. And and it's a lustful situation, a sinful situation, and it didn't end there. How many of y'all know, or you've heard people say that sin will take you further than where you want to go. It'll cost you more than what you want to pay. Uh, it's it's not a good thing, just not a good thing. And so he ends up uh, sleeping with Bathsheba, okay, sexual sin. That's adultery as well because Bathsheba was married, and she was married to one of the most dutiful soldiers in his army, someone who had great respect for him and uh, w was a, a really... Um, a, a really gung-ho soldier, uh, a soldier that had really uh, dedicated himself where he was as far as the army was concerned. And so he ends up, you know, sin goes on. Um, it's not just so much that he was having an adulterous affair. Um, he ends up impregnating her. Okay, so now she's pregnant, you know, but he's not repentant. He's just thinking... And, uh, and, you know, he's got basically, if you allow me to say secret serviceman, he's the king. So he's got people that are serving around him that I'm sure were sworn to secrecy. 
and it probably could have been their life had they been talking too much. You know, he's the king. So he feels like everything is fine. Sometimes when we don't, we aren't punished or we don't uh, face the consequences of certain, uh, of our certain actions immediately, you know, many times we think, okay, well, we got away with it. And sometimes it'll keep us in that cycle. It'll keep us doing things because we, we feel like we're not caught. But uh, God sees everything and God has a way. We can choose to sin. We, we have choice. You know, God did not make us robots. We have the ability to reason to, to and, you know, and we can choose to do wrong. I'm talking about when you know and you understand what you're doing is wrong. We can choose to do wrong, but um, we cannot choose to not face the consequences for what we have done. Um, there will be consequences. And sometimes we think we've gotten away with it. Uh, but the Bible says that we will reap what we sow. Yes, we will. Some things we do, you know, in our younger years, and it may not come to us till we're seniors or to, 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 it may come to us at the worst possible time. You know, you may um, think, oh, I can do my spouse any old kind of way and it's perfectly fine. But down the line, you may decide, okay, I'm going to get straight. I'm going to straighten up. And when I straighten up, it's going to be all right. And now you're just in love and um, things can happen to you where it comes back to you. It does not even have to be that spouse, but things will come back. Be sure your sins will find you out. So David, he goes on and now she's pregnant. She's pregnant with his baby and he has... Um, no way of pinning it. And I mean, the story goes on. There's more details, but he doesn't have a way of pinning it uh, on, uh, on Uriah as he would like to. So what he does, he goes from committing uh, lust to adultery to now he's going to have, he commits murder. He, he commits murder. He plans the murder. He plans the murder of one of his most dutiful soldiers. He, um, you know, he, everything has just gone out the window, even though he has been one of God's uh, affluent worshipers. He has, he has danced before the Lord, danced out of his clothes. He has killed Goliath. He has done all, you know, commanded these armies, these victorious armies and such. And now here, and he can have any woman that he wants, anybody that he wants. Um, but he, but the enemy would have, would set him up with a married woman and um you know i kind of think sometimes i try to think about what was in bathsheba's mind um was this would this have been considered rape um was this a form of rape because of his position because of who he was and and such uh i don't know i don't know i just know it was a mess i know it is a mess and i know that when god calls people to certain positions, um, uh, we have to remember to stay in God's face. We have to remember to continue to fast and pray. And they say that you pray so that you'll stay. They say that you fast so that you'll last because the enemy, he has setups all along the way. He has setups all along the way. And many times people uh, with with the promotion that God gives, many times the prestige and the power, it uh, along the way, if they don't stay in God, it changes their perspective on sin to where they almost become desensitized and they begin to do things, and then they think that they're untouchables. But you can't if you forget who God is, and if you forget that God knows your secret, if you forget that nothing you do is is, you know, where he can't, he sees everything. He knows everything. And so, so it goes on. The drama goes on and, um, Uriah is put on the front lines and killed and David wanted him killed. So it's murder. He has him killed. And, um, Bathsheba goes on, he goes on, he goes back and marries her and, um, you know, and she's pregnant with child and so on and so forth. And the story goes on. You'll have to read about it. But my whole purpose of going this way is to, to bring up and just to remind us that God is watching. 
God is watching us and he's looking at our heart. He knows um, what we're capable of. He knows the pathway that we take. Um, and we need to be careful in everything that we do. We need to um, be mindful to make the right choices. Know when to run. <laughs> know when to run. Joseph ran. When Potiphar's wife was after him, he ran. He got out of there. I mean, they, she still you know, tried to pin it on him and such, but he ran. He ran uh, to avoid sinning, to avoid falling into sin, flee fornication. Um, sometimes you know you have to just avoid, avoid the very appearance of evil. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Um, it's not worth it. And sin, you know, it has steps. And before you know it, you're like, how did I get this far out here? And it has consequences and such. And so it was not good. Now, I want to talk as I close on something that uh, is a good thing. Now, prayer. We know that the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing tells us to pray without ceasing. And um, he says also that we ought to go into our closet, our secret closet. And and when we pray in private, I am paraphrasing, that he will reward us openly. And just like what Adam and Eve d did is now public, what Adam and Eve done, ha have done, uh, it's in the history of the Bible. Uh, we talk about it. I'm sure it's talked about daily by somebody. We, as the human race, we have suffered the consequences of things that they did years and years and years and eons ago. Um, as far as David is concerned, um, he didn't get away with it because God sent the prophet. A prophet or a prophet speaks for God. He he's his voice, and he uh, came and. And he basically busted him out, you know, let him know that God saw this, that God was not pleased. And the child did pass away. David, you know, God forgave him. And, and David went on to do what it was that he would have him to do. Adultery is not something anybody should play around with. Um, many people are hurt as a result of it. As a result of it, it's not worth it. Uh, not just that, but fornication. The Bible says you sin against your own body when you're committing fornication. Um, sex is only for married. It's only for the married. It's a gift for the married. And if you're not, and I'm not married at this particular time, and you got to stay in God. You have, yes, you have temptations. You have temptations, but it's not worth it. It's not worth it. God sees and God knows. And um, if once married have a good time once you're married have a real good time but if you are single then look to the Lord and avoid every every situation you possibly can uh, by the grace of God sometimes you got to pray sometimes God says don't go sometimes you you know you have to be that stuck up one you got to act funny sometime uh, but if it keeps you uh, from committing fornication if it keeps you from committing adultery if, if if one or both partners is married, um, live godly, live for the Lord, live a clean life. It's worth it. It's worth it all. So when we pray and we get in God's face, God will reward us openly. God will bless us. You know, people will see, oh, the anointing on their life. And we want the anointing on our life because the anointing makes a difference. And the anointing destroys every yoke, destroys every yoke. So if you really want your business private, let it be about talking with the Lord. Let it be about praying without ceasing. Let it be about, you know, praying 
in quiet, praying in your secret closet, having a prayer life. And then when you go out in public, you know, God can shine through you and people can see God in you. And even though you do have, you know, struggles here and there and you've been tempted here and there, at the same time, you'll have that keeping power within you because you went and talked to God privately. And then when your business is public, it'll be all good. It'll be all good. All good. So God is good. For those that, okay, you say, well, you know, I did make a mistake. Or yes, I am in in something like that. I'm locked up in some kind of lustful situation. You know, run, get to some uh, God-fearing uh, covering um, or such. You know, be mindful. Ask God who to talk to because everybody is not confidential and everybody is not, you know, the right person to talk to. And um, repent, start all over. Repent, start all over. Push the plate back, do what you got to do. Talk to talk to your, your Holy Ghost field covering. It's very important. Uh, I'm sure there, I mean, if hell could reveal how many were there, as a result of sexual sin, my Lord, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. I didn't even mean to take this video into that, but I, I did pray first and maybe this is the direction that he would have us to go. Uh, God can and God will keep you. If you want to be kept and it's a consistency, you have to consistently get in God's face. You have to consistently, um, many times you have to change your lifestyle up, um, so that, you know, so that you're not in places. So you're not in situations that lead you into temptation. And, uh, and it's good to pray, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil, deliver me from evil. And God will do just that. He will do just that. Uh, one last thing I want to say before I close, and that is this, that I have heard, and I do believe this, that many times God deals with people about repenting of their sins, about stopping um, sinful situations that people are into, and, and he'll deal with them about this, or he'll send a prophetic word, or, or he'll send the word of God, he, he, he sending this video. And he'll do that as a way of warning people. And when people continue to do it, continue to do it, continue to do it, then that's when things usually are exposed. That's when things usually go public. That's when, you know, it becomes the talk of the town and, and uh, there's shame, there's demotion, and it's all public. But many times by the time that happens, God has been saying, hey, stop it. Hey, that's not right. You know better than that. And and um, and such. So, I'm saying if God is sending this warning, stop it. In the name of Jesus, you know, ask God to help you get to the altar, get to the prayer meeting, push your plate back, because uh, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. My name is Nichelle and these are my notes. Mm -hmm.